Texans picked up an idea from Midwestern ranchers in the mid-60s and built it up in the typical Texas fashion to meet the growing demand for adequate meat in the markets of the state. Since the mid-60s, feedlot operations, such as the Caltex feedlot near Abilene, have been depended upon as a major supplier of beef for Texans. The feeding operations have provided a higher quality of meat to the market with minimal increase in the price to the consumer. This year, the story may change. Caltex stated that feed costs went up $15 per ton in the last 60 days, and that is the FDA's abolition of the use of the growth hormone stilbestorol, which has speeded up the natural fattening of cattle. Without the hormone in the cattle's diet, it will take longer to get a cow ready for market and consequently increased production cost. This cost increase should start showing up in the supermarkets around May or June of 1973. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is Bob Schaus in West Texas. You know, the legal aspects are that codes are usually developed uh, to provide provisions in them for current times. And once a building is built, meeting the requirements of those regulations then in effect, it's not uh, the proper legal thing to require them to now comply with current new regulations.
You have to turn it on. Now, by turning one button to the right and one to the left, this is what happens. I can turn around and get your picture. The nozzle will also turn. Cummings, how yeah. did this eye? Twelve hundred gallons a minute, but the nozzle will automatically compensate. If you just have one hose, it will discharge up to three hundred. Well, we didn't uh, quite come out as well, you know, the other day as we thought we should have. What, in revenue sharing, you mean? In revenue sharing, and this is, of course, what we're interested in. And if we can, uh, I think we can uh, pay for it uh, many fold, and uh, I think it probably would be a good uh, uh, investment. It's something that we're going to consider as we, when we adopt the budget. Do you have a man and a figure uh, for his salary in mind? I, we have talked to a former Fort Worth attorney, Don Curley, who is practicing law, or he has talked to us, who's practicing law in Washington, and it would be a very nominal amount, of not more, something less than $10,000. The crowd began to form in the bleachers on Commerce Street before sunup, and as they huddled together in the early morning cold, they could while away the hours watching TV crews getting ready to televise the parade nationwide. By the time the parade stepped off at 9.30, the sidewalks were jammed with thousands of people, and of all those who turned out for this year's Cotton Bowl Parade, the most fascinated of all were the children.
The fire cat looks like a large toy at first, but it weighs 2,000 pounds and carries a price tag of $15,000. And its job fighting fires is nothing to toy around with. It goes places where firemen could not go because of heat, explosives, and other dangerous conditions. The major advantage is the fire cat operates by remote control. It's being demonstrated here by the man who invented the firefighting mini tank, Bill Cummins of Fort Worth. For many years, there's been a great need of having a mobile remote control method of approaching fires that are just too explosive in nature or too toxic. There's uh, many, many chemicals that, that uh, will harm a man if he approaches uh, while it's burning. So I decided to build this unit primarily to fight aircraft fires. But it has proven that uh, it's good on structural fires, it's good uh, around refineries, the forestry service is interested in it. It's good for any purpose that, that you have a hazard and you need to take your master streams in close to proximity to the fire. The fire cat has been successfully tested at its first full-fledged fire last Thursday night, a four-alarmer that destroyed Gibson's discount store in Hearst. Because of toxic gases, live ammunition, and exploding aerosol cans, the fire cat was called in. Ironically, Tarrant County commissioners cut the money from Fire Marshal Mason Langford's budget to purchase one of the machines the very next day. Cummins says the price of the fire cat will go down as more departments adopt the new firefighting tool. The Army has already bought some of the machines and the Navy may do the same. Cummins says the fire cat can be used in riot control, minefield detection, television monitoring in dangerous areas, and many other uses. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move. So about the time the manager started walking up and he pulled out the gun and said, get on up here, buddy. So then he came over and he gave him all the bills. He said he didn't want the loose change, but he gave him the rolls. And uh, then he put it in. He wanted to look in the other cash star. So we opened it up and there wasn't any money in it. So he said, Happy New Year and turned around and walked out. The gunman struck at Harold's Liquor Store in the 3400 block of North Decatur. The manager of the store, June Wall, said she was alone at the time when the man entered to buy a package of cigarettes. She said he didn't show a weapon but held his hand in his jacket as if he had a gun. She said she was forced to get on the floor as the man took more than $300 from the cash register. Mrs. Wall said she is sure the electronic cameras got a good picture of the man. Less than five minutes later, Fort Worth police, having an accurate description of the getaway car, captured a suspect about a mile away. He was taken to the police department where charges are still pending. The man reportedly had about the same amount of cash as taken from the liquor store. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. Cunningham today. I ask if he had received the Mesquite Fire Department's official cause for the fire. Yes, we do. And he did verify electrical, uh, electrical uh, fire. In what part of the store? 
in the left front around the registers from the registers to the uh, frozen food boxes to the left. So despite uh, last night's uh, or night before last fire, there is no uh, suspicion of arson then? None whatsoever, just a coincidence. Randy Morris lived in this converted mobile home behind his grandmother's house. Most people in Forney will tell you that Randy had wanted to be a firefighter as long as they could remember. And meanwhile, right down the street, the ruins are still smoldering at a lumber company where fire destroyed everything standing just 24 hours previous to the Cunningham fire. But as they say, there is no arson suspected at this time. Randy Moore was not a beginner at fighting fires as a volunteer helper. You see, he helped fight this fire just 24 hours before his death. His father owned this lumber yard. In Forney, this is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move. Well, uh, you know, uh, like you say, being 5'10 and everything, uh, I come out and uh, give 110%. And, you know, sometimes it uh, depends. You know, certain teams we play, they have, you know, bigger guards. And the coach, you know, figure like uh, he has to go with his bigger guards, which is fine, you know, since he's coaching everything. But, uh, you know, I just come out and, uh, you know, play, play tough defense and whatever I can contribute to help the team. Because of your quickness and your speed, do you prefer the run and shoot type of basketball? Oh, yes, definitely. So, you know, at my height and everything, that's my type of game. You know, uh, getting the ball, you know, the big guys, getting it off the board, whipping it out to me, you know, when we go on the break. And, you know, if I got the shot from 10 or 15 feet or else I can hit the open man. So I say, you know, most of the guards in the league, uh, you know, under six foot, uh, the smaller guard, we prefer this type of game. A lot of guards like to score points, and that's it. But you don't seem to give up anything on defense. Oh, well, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, you hear a lot of coaches say the little guys, you know, they can't play the defense. But, uh, you know, I really take pride in playing D. And uh, I come out and, you know, I go down. If I score, you know, I come down and, uh, like you say, I just, you know, take great pride in playing defense. Originally, the city council was considering a plan which would have placed guards at all the boarding gates here at Love Field. To do this would have required more than 100 guards and would have cost about a million dollars a year. But under the security plan adopted today, the checkpoints and the security guards will not be at the boarding gates. They'll be here in each major concourse using an electronic detection device similar to the ones now being used in the Delta Airlines concourse. The advantages of this plan is that it will reduce the number of guards which are needed from more than 100 to less than 70 and will cut the cost in half. But there is one big disadvantage to this plan. It means that everyone who comes to the concourse will have to pass through the detection device. Even those people who are going to a boarding gate to meet a passenger 
or to see him off. And if the non-passengers cause an alarm on the detection device, they'll have to be searched too. City officials realize this will cause inconvenience for some people. But that's a price the city is willing to pay in return for increased security at Love Field. And it will all go into effect throughout the airport on February 6th. Jack Hill, Channel 8 News on the Move. Well, it'll buy us uh, a great uh, deal of publicity to the world, showing that Dallas and Fort Worth are together and they're building the greatest airport in the world, which in turn will uh, get worldwide coverage from the standpoint of bringing commerce and industry to this area. Would that, would that work as a spare? Can we, can we put that one in as a spare? If yes, I you can keep it as a spare. It's only on the ground then that this counts? That's right, only on the ground. Yes, sir. Have you had a lot of customers come in in the last week or so before this new regulation went into effect to try yes. to get inspected before they had to have good tires? Yes, we did. Last week we had uh, quite a few last week come in before the first, even though some of them was, uh, wasn't due until the second uh, of the year, the second month in the year. It to be February, they still come in. Well, this is Roger McDonald, uh, Channel 8 News on the move, apparently illegally. Sixteen-year-old Nancy Wilson has set up shop in her hospital bed. She may be sick, but that's not stopping her from doing her part to raise enough money to get the Brian Adams Band and Drill Team to the President's inauguration in Washington. She's selling light bulbs and has even conned her nurse into buying some. Nancy, don't you think this is going a little bit beyond the call of duty? I mean, selling from your hospital bed? Well, not really, because we want to go to Washington, you know, real bad, because... This is the most important thing to us. And besides, it's a good sales pitch because who else has as much money as doctors does? Well, how much money have you managed to raise? Well, by the last count, we have $5,000. Well, now, the band needs something like $40,000 to get to Washington, D.C. And if the rest of the healthy members of the band are as enthusiastic as Nancy in raising the money, they're bound to make it. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move.
Uh, we're holding these votes. Yes. Information, may I help you? Well, I'm.